Hello friends, my name is Lori Haynes and I'm a member of Maine Project Learning Tree and today I'd like to do a little lesson called The Fallen Log. Now I was wondering, have you ever walked in the woods before and seen logs on the ground that were covered with moss or stumps that had holes in them and you wondered, wow, I wonder what's living in there? Well that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at fallen logs, logs that are up on the ground, and stumps and see what lives in, on, and under them. Now let's go down to this log right here. And I want you to look at some of the tools that I have that I use when I do my investigations. I usually bring a flashlight so that I can look into the fallen log. I have a measuring tape so I can measure the length of different kinds of organisms so I can identify them. I have this little pick, it's a dental pick actually, I don't use it on my teeth. I actually use it to go into logs and pull out little bits and pieces so that I can investigate them. And of course no scientist would be in the forest at all without their magnifying glass. Last of all, I have my data sheet. And that data sheet is very important to me because I record everything that I see as I'm going through the log. Now let's get started. Now that we have all the tools out of the way, I want to come up with a few questions and they're on the data sheet about this log before I get started. One of the questions is, how might the tree have died? Do you think it has been dead for a long time or a short time? What is your evidence for that? Is there still bark on the log? What is the condition of the log? What kind of plants are growing on the log? Is there evidence of animal activity in, on, or under the log? And do you see any animal or insect life present? All right, let's look at this log. Now, what's one of the first things that really pops out when you look at it? For me, it's the moss that covers the tree. This tells me this tree has probably been around for a long time. And moss comes in all different varieties, and it covers logs and rocks and soil. So there are many different kinds in the forest. The other thing that really stands out to me, and it's just so exciting, is, my goodness, look at the color of this wood. Have you ever seen wood that color before? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Well, that comes from not stain that you put from your food coloring, but that comes from something called green stain fungus. Kind of interesting. We don't actually see the mushrooms of it, but it actually, the pigments in it actually cause the green uh, of the wood itself. Sometimes this wood is actually used as decoration. It's so beautiful. The other thing that I see is look how rotten this wood is. I can just take my little pick and I can pick at the wood itself. It's so soft. What could cause that to happen? Well, probably that's another kind of fungus that might go in there and rot the tree. But what else do we see? Do we see any evidence of animals that might have lived in the tree? I mean, I'm looking over here. Look at this hole right here. I wonder if some little animal might have chewed upon that. Could have been a beetle, could have been an ant. There are all kinds of organisms that live in these trees and break them down over time. Well, friends, I moved down the trail a bit, and here we are at some red maple logs that are about 10 years old. They've been rapidly decaying all this time, and I'd like us to look and see if we can find evidence of plant and animal life on these logs. So we're going to zoom on in and take a closer look. Now, what do you see on this log? Let's see if we can find evidence of animal life. Do you see any holes on this log or any live animals? Ooh, oh my goodness. I see a beetle. Wow, right here. It's a firefly, a winter dark firefly. That's so cool. Wow. So I'm looking for signs of animal life and I think, what do you think might live down in here? Somebody made a little tunnel for themselves into the wood. It could be a mouse. Who knows, something like that would live there. Let's see other animal life that we might find. We've seen the beetle already and that was actually alive. I think it's a little cool for it now. But if we look up here, 
we see some holes in the wood. Now, these holes were probably created by pileated woodpeckers searching for grubs and ants to eat. There could be insects such as carpenter ants and termites also creating the smaller holes that you see. Now the other thing that I'm looking at here, sort of evidence of, I guess you would say, plant life, is what would cause, look at this rot. There's so much rot. And just like we saw before, my gosh, look at this. It's just falling apart. I think what probably caused most of this is what's called brown rot fungus. And I think over here might be white rot fungus as well. I'm not really sure, but I'd say that's probably a pretty good guess. Now let's go up and look at the top of this log. Now you can see this was sliced off. In fact, all of these logs that are right in this line were part of a huge maple tree 10 years ago that was threatening our yard and we had to cut it down. So let's look and see what we see here. So, right on the surface, you can see moss, just like we saw on the fallen log. But a lot of this moss has sort of broken off with the decayed wood. But as you can see, some of it is still growing. Um, we can see, of course, our little friend, the beetle. And if we look right on top of the log, my goodness, what do we see here? Who might have been here on this log? Who eats acorns. Well that's right friends, I'll bet you got it. Squirrels. I would imagine there was probably a squirrel that sat right on this stump or maybe even a little chippy and ate that nut right there. Now there's something else really cool as we look at this. I'm seeing evidence of animal life. Do you see what I'm seeing right here? Do you guys know what this is? <laughs> I do. I think that's poop. I don't know whose poop it is, but I don't think, uh, well, some of it's a little oblong there. I know that chipmunks and mice have oblong poop. I know that beetles and, well, yeah, beetles and uh, caterpillars have rounded poop. So I'm not really sure who made this poop, but somebody was sitting here pooping. Now let's look at a little bit of plant life here. Well, fungus, actually. This is kind of cool. Look at these. I think that these are left over from puffballs that poofed open at one point in time. So these are sort of the old shells of the puff, ooh, of the puffball after it opened up and puff. Ooh, did you see that? You see the spores? Oh my goodness, look. That's so cool. So that's another fungus that's living on the log and helping to decay it. I think that's the beginning of a little puffball that hasn't puffed yet, but it will when it gets a little bigger. How cool is that? And do you see all these holes? I'll bet those are probably, like we said before, woodpecker holes, something like that. Wow, this is a really cool log. There's so much evidence of plant and animal life. Now we're going to go down the trail, across our yard, and I'll meet you at another stump that is so incredibly special. And it's a black locust stump. And it's got lichens all over its surface. Let's go over there. See you in a minute. Hello friends, here we are at the black locust stump. This is a much drier, sunnier location than we had over at the red maple logs. Now this stump, because it rots so slowly, is a perfect substrate for lichen growth. There is a beautiful lichen garden growing on the surface of this stump, and I'd like you to zoom in with me and let's look at what's growing on the stump. All right, here we go. Here we see all these little lichens that are all on this stump, and I'll tell you, it's a magical world in there. This is an entire community of all different kinds of lichens. Now, most of the ones that you're seeing here are what we call fruticose lichens. And fruticose lichens are lichens that actually look like they're bushes or little shrubs. What you see here are British soldier. And British soldier lichens have stalks and they branch a little bit, but they've got these little red caps on them. Then right next to them, I think you see what I think might be reindeer moss. 
and reindeer moss really is lichen. We also see little pixie cups. Uh, somewhere I've seen them, and also we've got, oh, here's one right here. I don't know if we can see it, but it's right here. And all of these lichens live on this stump. They don't hurt it, but it's a, the stump itself is rotting, and it makes a really good substrate for the growth of these. And it's an entire community. And I've actually seen lichens in the uh, nests of birds, along with mosses, and it makes a really nice place to raise the babies. Very soft nest material. So you didn't see all these lichens when you were looking at the uh, red maple stumps. But this is a different location, very sunny, and perfect for the lichens to grow. They might want it a little wetter, but we get enough rain here in Maine that it works just fine. Now besides all these little bitty lichens, are there, is there evidence of anything else that you see here? I seeing something that really surprised me. Look right here. That's a little bitty insect egg and it is tiny. Now I also see some evidence of animals right here. Do you know what this is? We saw this earlier on the uh, maple stump. This is an acorn. So there must have been a squirrel sitting right up top of this stump munching on an acorn. Well folks, after we've seen this and the maple stumps, I'd like to challenge you to find your own stumps and or fallen logs and see what you can find on them out in the woods or in your yard or in your schoolyard. Anywhere you can find a fallen log or a stump, you're going to find an entire community of all kinds of organisms that make it up. And that's so much fun to do. So take your time, find a place that's really special to you, keep an eye on it. And you can do this day after day, year after year, and see how the organisms, the stump itself, changes over time. That's your challenge. Thanks for watching. Bye.